In this video, we interview Seth, an HVAC contractor in the Houston metropolitan area, and he talks air quality, dehumidification, and air filters. And this is part of a longer form interview. So if you are interested in watching the full interview, we'll make sure to link that at the end for your convenience. So switching gears a little bit, I had, uh, you know, I have some questions about um, air quality. I know a lot of folks watching the channel have questions about air quality in the Houston, you know, area, especially because you guys have a lot of oil and gas. So there is a lot of, there is pollution and people are trying to deal with, you know, air quality in their home. What are some of the, the IAQ products that you guys like to use and how effective are they in, you know, improving the quality of air in people's homes? Yeah, there, there's two products that I'm a huge fan of. One is just a, a media filter, right? Like stop running one inch filters at your return. Like if that's all you can do, that's better than nothing, but they don't really protect the system and they're not really fit in the air. Like you need to go to, you know, a media filter that gives you 11, 13, 16 microns, whatever you're comfortable with to really get the, the, the particulate matter out of the air. So down here in Houston, it's no, like we know it's humid outside, right? We've talked about that. Yeah. What is humidity and heat breed? You know, all kinds of biologics, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, mildews, molds, all kinds of stuff growing outside. Pollen, if you, you know, if you have allergies, which most people do down here because we have so many different species of, of vegetation. And, you know, so first of all, we want to get those things out of the air, right? And, and then we're going to deal with some of the other stuff that you may or may not know is there. So I worked in a different industry. I, I mentioned earlier, I worked in the petrochemical industry. I did environmental monitoring. So we monitored oil and gas refineries, chemical plants to make sure that they were meeting or at least reporting if they exceeded TCEQ, Texas Commission for Environmental Quality's rules or the Environmental Protection Agency's rules. And I was shocked when I worked in the industry about how much pollution is actually being caused by these facilities and all that's going into the air. So most Houstonians or people in the area, they've seen on the news, the air quality alerts, they get them on their phones. What they may or may not realize is why those air quality alerts are there. And it's because those, those you know, chemicals in the air, whether it's ozone or whether it's SOX or NOx or any of those chemicals, they're irritants. They can cause asthma attacks. They can make it, you know, breathing difficult for people who may have any kind of compromised lungs or immune system. And so, you know, they provide those alerts. Well, if you, you know, if you're opening and closing the door of your home, any of those pollutants from outside are now coming in your home. So to address those, we have the media filter to do the particulates. What I like to put on the other side is a product called a, a, a Remy Halo. And basically it's ionized hydrogen peroxide. So it, it's ionized so it'll attract and kind of clump and pull things out of the airstream. And the hydrogen peroxide portion will kill any biologic. So if it's viruses, bacteria, those sorts of things that are in the air. And I made sure that, you know, when we were offering these products, we didn't want to just like get some snake oil. <laughs> you know, from sure. a snake oil salesman and just start passing it along, we made sure that they these products were scientifically tested and that they actually work. So if you look at this, this product actually, uh, or this technology was actually developed by NASA and was used in space missions to help clean the air. So that was, you know, looking at those two solutions, you can really get that airstream as clean as possible. The only thing to do above that would be like, you know, whole home HEPA filtration, which is, you know, more, uh, more costly and a lot more disruptive to people's lives than uh, than these products are. Yeah, because a HEPA filter, that's technically, you're getting up into like MERV 16, right? That's essentially yeah. like an, it's like an N95 mask in yeah. terms of like the filtration. So it's very restrictive and, and yeah, more complicated. And are you, and so the, the two things you're really trying to address with both those is going to be like particulate matter. And, and you said you're running like MERV 13 typically on the um, media side. Yeah, that's, that's our preferred. Um, now we do have, obviously there is a concern with static pressure. So mm -hmm. if you restrict the airflow too much, the system yeah. has to work too hard. For clarification for viewers, that's not a one inch filter. That's like a four or a five inch media filter. So it's a thicker that's... media filter and it's a separate box that gets installed at install time. We're not talking about just slapping a one inch MERV 13 filter in the, in the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> that... That, that may cause your system to ice up. Um, you know, yeah. so that's that's our preferred solution. And the other thing I like about that too is if you have that uh, that, that media filter, right? So that four inch filter that's sitting right at the butt of the furnace, mm -hmm. it helps keep the blower wheel, the evaporator clean. 
an issue that people may not realize is that the, the air transit from wherever your return grill is to your system may or may not be sealed. You know, yeah. we see a lot of homes that are, you know, newer construction homes where return chases and other, other boxes are not sealed. So there is kind of the, the, the negative air uh, pressure that occurs on the return side pulls dust and attic air, wall air into that return air stream. And all that dust and dirt is going to go collect on the wet thing that's going to hit down the road, which is the evaporator coil. So we, we often, when we go to a home, we see they have dirty blower wheel, an impacted evaporator coil. That's one of our big, uh, you know, upgrades for them is put a media filter there to protect those components. Uh, but and yes, that's that's all particulate side. Yeah, awesome. And then on the uh, I the you mentioned the Remy Halo. Now for for customers that have concerns with ozone, because some of those products do produce ozone, which is technically uh, more uh, of an issue for people with sense, you know, sensitive lungs. Like if you have asthma or something, that can be an irritant. Is that correct? That's correct. And then, the, but the, yeah. the Remy, is there an alternative to that Remy that maybe doesn't produce ozone, but still has some effectiveness in, in removing those particles? So the good thing is the Remy doesn't produce ozone. It does um, not. Okay. So that's one of yeah. the. So, yeah. We, we, there, we used to use another product. So there's other, there's many, many of these products on the market. It's air, it's air scrubber is another one, right? And because th yeah. they make, they make an ozone and an ozone free, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So you've used those ones in the past. Yes. Yeah. We, we use the, the air scrubber and there's nothing wrong with the product. All these products are based on the same technology. The issue for us is the longevity of this, the reactive cell, the UV light, the ballast. So the product that we chose to, to promote or to, to offer, we wanted to get the one that had the best lifespan, best warranty, those kind of issues. The technology itself, like I said, was developed by NASA. So there's, there's myriad options out there. Cool. Right on. And then as far as, um, you know, uh, switching gears kind of back to an earlier topic with dehumidification in your space, typically are you guys installing dehumidifiers at all, or is it your frame of reference or belief that the, the HVAC system itself should be doing the, the dehumidification? I think in most cases, a properly sized, uh, HVAC system, you know, properly sized and configured duct system will do enough dehumidification for the average homeowner. There are situations though, where maybe because of the construction issue with the home, et cetera, that we will install a dehumidification system, but our preference, whenever customers call and ask about dehumidification, putting a standalone dehumidifier in their home, our first question is let's evaluate the system and make sure it's working properly first. Uh, again, I've seen, over 12 years that properly sized HVAC systems, even single stage systems here in Houston, typically are gonna land at home between 55 and 65% relative humidity. Now the EPA guidance would be 50 to 60% would be the target window to really minimize any potential for biological growth, you know, in, in closets, wall space, you know, the areas sure. of the home. When it's, it's really those cases where there's maybe some condition with the home, like excessive infiltration or something where we would say, okay, we need to, we need to get additional supplemental dehumidification in here. But I don't think it's something that I would recommend for every home. Gotcha. Okay. No, I just like to clarify because we the only time we've ever seen those, they're rarely requested here, obviously, because even in the yeah. summer, I think the natural humidity outside is maybe 50, 60 percent. So it's really not that that humid even outside. Um, so we don't deal with it as much. So it's more in a commercial setting, indoor pools, things like that, mm -hmm. where we're running into um you know, cause you're not going to run the AC for an indoor pool in the middle of the winter out here. And so, and so they're normally looking at, uh, them for that purpose. Um, now, now being in Houston, obviously that's oil and gas central. You have a lot of the oil companies there. And so you're one, this is just a question. I'm just curious what you guys are running into. We have some aerospace out here. You know, we have some oil and gas as well. So we, we do service a lot of engineers and engineers when we show up at their house are very technical. A lot of them watch our channel. And so they're very interested in, you know, the topics. And um, sometimes they'll do stuff where it's over-engineered. I'm like, bro, you don't need four pumps on this boiler. You just want one. Like it's going to cause problems. I know you guys don't do any boilers in Houston, obviously, because yeah. it's there's no need for that, but a few weeks out of the year. Right. But, um, but here we'll, we'll get a lot of those. And so what are this, like when you're talking to engineers out there, what are the systems that they're interested in and what do they kind of, are, are they asking a lot of questions about kind of, you know, the off grid stuff or, or, you know, being energy independent or are they interested in the heat pumps? Do they, 
are you know want just kind of basic systems what are, what are engineers kind of gravitating towards and what questions do they have when you guys are serving them uh, a lot of them ask really really good questions about the technology and how the system does you know what it's promoted as being able to do what what i've found because my uh my previous company prior to joining champion and nash a, a lot of our client base were from nasa so we had a lot of you know nasa engineers a couple of astronauts oh wow uh, that were clients yeah uh you know we we did a lot of work for them and, and they would always ask really good questions and uh you know sometimes those really good questions would end up on a, a disagreement um and i always told them well you probably know more than i do so you want you want a job because i'm always <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> talent. Uh, no, but but what I would see a lot of times is they would tend to gravitate to the higher end systems just because they understood the technology and what it could do. And, and a lot of them are very energy usage conscious because they understand kind of the the, the life uh, life cycle of energy production. You know, they understand the, the, the costs along the way, not just for themselves, but also for the community, you know, because they deal with they deal with these types of issues all the time in their in their jobs or, you know, like mechanical engineers, um, you know, they're very interested in in the, you know, how we get it all to work. How, how does this all work? You know, how did they overcome these different problems in designing the systems? So I t I, they tend to gravitate towards the, the upper end of the uh, performance for the system. So your higher SEER, your inverter series. Um, and they also ask really good questions. So there's always good conversations. Right on. Yeah, no, I was, like I said, I was always curious because I we get into conversations sometimes. And like I said, I had one guy, he sent me plans that he drew up himself for his HVAC. And I was like, I, I was like, I'm, I'm sure you're very qualified. I, I know you know what you're doing, but you only want one pump. You don't want four, trust me, because the only time you're using multiple pumps in for boilers is when you're going to like radiant floor systems. And the reason is, is because the loops, like if you have a, a hundred foot loop versus a, a loop that's only 20 feet away, that difference is going, the water is going to be lazy. It's going to want to go, you know, to the 20 foot zone versus so you don't want just one pump on it you'll have a pump going to each header for the those radiant so those that's like the only time i've ever because otherwise you're just like you're spending money on four pumps that are going to go down more often and uh create a restriction versus just do one pump one zone bell but i'm always curious how you know involved the engineers are in each market and what they're um doing um now as far as um brands uh it, what what brands do you guys carry and then when people are asking for a specific brand i mean what's your take on on brand and why do you sell you know kind of what you sell and, and what's your your opinion there i mean that's a great question because there there are quite a few options out there and in in the industry my take has always been that they're they're kind of four or five flagship brands you know so american standard train linux carrier you know, uh, then you had your mid-grade, you know, not to talk down about any brand, because I think the most important thing from a consumer standpoint is that it's installed correctly. And I think that's kind of a universal sentiment in the industry. Like if it's installed correctly, it's going to perform, you know, to its, the best of its ability. From a service and, and technology standpoint, we prefer uh, train and trains ability for us to go in and really customize and dial in the system's performance to an individual home. So we we're uh, training uh, comfort specialists. So we're part of their, their premier dealer uh, program. We really like the, um, the attention to detail that train puts into all of their components, not only just for the consumer, but also for servicing and management of that system after the fact. Things like the cloud-based monitoring that we can do for the comfort link uh, systems that they have. So we actually know there's a problem with the system before the homeowner does in a lot of cases. We can proactively manage those before they become breakdowns. Yeah, that's awesome. I was going to ask about that. So you are dealing with cloud services, and then you're are you guys get how, as far as how that works? That's like a subscription, um, correct? And then they have you have uh, remote monitoring. Is that how it works with Train on that? particular product right so we can remotely monitor it'll it'll alert us you know if there's any hiccups any issues with the system we can pull performance reports so you know if someone's like you know what i don't it feels like it's running longer than it used to you know or 
you know, any kind of concern of what the customer may have, we can actually pull the empirical data from the system itself and see what the run times were, what the humidity level was at the time, you know, just that whole performance report that we can get out of it. Um, in addition, I think the biggest benefit though for homeowners is that kind of proactive monitoring that it does where if the system's experiencing an issue, it's going to alert us and hopefully it alerts us and we are able to correct it before they experience a breakdown. That's kind of the, the goal of that. So we hope you found this content helpful. And if you did, please smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for the algorithm. And as promised earlier, there's a video popping up on the screen right now. And that's a link to the long form interview. So check that out if you haven't done so already. And for more information on how you can connect with Seth, if you happen to be in the Houston area, there's a link in the description for your convenience.